What? On the weekend? What <laughs> the heck is going on here? Taylor, are you here? I'm here. Oh I don't know God. why, but I'm here. <laughs> uh, what we've done, folks, is we've just paused the show on Thursday because we had a lot of tickers left over. And I got to be honest with you, Taylor and I feel guilty at the end of the show. We really do. Because we, we do, yeah. We want to share as much information as we can, but an hour and a half for a video, that's pretty long. So we got to be real. So what we're doing is just picking up where we left off on Thursday, and we're going to jump right back into this. Now, because we are recording this, I can't see your comments, but my lovely co-host, Taylor, she's already taken down your names. She's taken down your tickers. So we know what we're doing. We're all lined up here, and I'm ready to go. We're ready. Right now. The so first one we're gonna the first one is um H O L O by Quodwo team or Quadwo team. Not sure, but that was the yeah. Quodwo I hate, team. H O L O I hate names. So we are looking at Holo, Micro Cloud Hologram. She's not exactly a penny stock, but she's got a lot going for her right now. She's had some hellacious action on her chart. Woohoo! She finished today. Uh, now, remember, this is uh, Thursday. So she finished today on Thursday at $6.63. And she dropped about 1%. This is another penny stock on the NASDAQ. So what is Holo Micro Cloud all about? Well, they're about holograms. They work with holograms in a lot of different ways. Matter of fact, I do believe I have their website here. They give us an idea here of what they're doing. They work with holograms in all sorts of different ways. You have them working with mobile apps. They are creating what they call duplicates. I don't know what that's for, but whatever you have in the physical world, they can create it in the hologram world. You don't need any special glasses to see their holograms. They just come up. They're working with holograms with LIDAR. LIDAR is what makes our autonomous vehicles be able to see there's lots of different types of LIDAR out there, and they're working with hologram LIDAR. Here's their twin technical services. If you want more information about what it is, they've got it here. And they've got other aspects that they're working with, and all of them have to do with holograms. And I don't know exactly how that can work for us, but they seem to think it has a lot of potential. So what other information did I find about this company? Well, let me see here. We had a reverse split. I think that's what I was finding over here. Didn't we have a, yes, a one in 10 reverse split on this On company. February 2nd. Thank you very much. February 2nd, a one in 10 reverse split. Um, and we just had $14 million invested into the company through promissory notes. Now let's back up a little bit so we can get some information about the shares. They did a one in 10 reverse split. We're going to want to know how many shares are left after that. This is the final count. As far as I can tell, you don't do a one in 10 reverse split when you've only got 5 million shares. I assure you that. So we're down to 5 million shares outstanding. Don't know what the float is, but we know it's not more than the outstanding share count. And it could be considerably less. So we definitely have a low float. Market cap is currently at 34 million. Relative volume for the company today was up a little bit, jumping from 13 million to 16 million. And this was a stock that was traded on my Penny Boys group today a lot. There were a lot of chatters talking about Holo today. I saw it back and forth as I was posting my news. Uh, let's see what we have here for financials. Well, they're making pretty decent revenues. 2021, they did 56 million. Don't forget, we got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers on any of these charts. At the end of 2022, we were at $72 million, and they got to keep virtually 50% of that in profit. Quarterly, whoa. <laughs> All right, we've got two of them here, which are basically at $24 million, the uh, third and first quarter of 2022. I don't know what happened to this one. And I don't know what happened to this one. The very last quarter for 2022, we see this over and over again. There's always these peculiar numbers in the last quarter that make the annuals look crazy. Well, they were down $49 million at the end of 2022, and they took a loss of $22 million. First quarter in 2023, they were up uh, $6.5 million. 
they got to keep three, almost four million of that. But where's the other reports? Where's June? Where's September? That's a little concerning to me. I don't see them here. Balance sheet for the company. We got lots of money in the bank. We got over $20 million. Total assets, $37 million. Aha, liabilities are way down there, just about 12. So we have positive stockholder equity here. We are holding cash of $25 million. Uh, let's see what we have for disclosures. We've got a 6K over here. Can't remember what this is for. Normally just look at the headline up here and they'll give you an idea. Ah, that was what I was telling you. They just got $14 million in some promissory notes. Don't think there was anything else here I needed to share with you. Let's see here. Did I miss anything? News. That's right. I knew there was something else. All right. News. We have nothing going on here. I mean, this is news coming from Seeking Alpha, but there is not one news press here. Now, I haven't had a chance to go running around the internet, but I know that this company has been catching a lot of attention right now. They just had their reverse split, and I don't know... I don't think that reverse split was done to bring this price up over a dollar. Not really. And from what I saw, without any news, I mean, I, I'll check over here. This was on, you said the reverse split was February 2nd, Taylor? Right. I will say right after the reverse split, the, the price was about $1.72. February 2nd here. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. February 9th. Micro cloud effective. Uh, Reduced the share. Okay, so they have reduced the authorized share count from, uh, reduced it from 50 million. What the heck is that? Uh, I'm trying to see what they've got. Okay, from 500 million down to 50 million. So not only did that one in 10 reverse split affect the outstanding shares and the float, they did it to the, uh, Authorized shares as well. So our authorized share count is now way down there. Is it fixed over here? Don't, don't even show it. It was a half a billion. Now it's only 50 million, which is a pretty decent thing. It takes the fear out that they're going to swamp the market with too many shares. But authorized shares can also be used as currency. They can pay themselves or they can use them to make a deal with another company instead of giving them cash. They can even use it to pay debt. So shares do come in handy. I do believe that's everything we've got for Holo, except that chart. And I know that chart has got some hot spots to share. Yeah, the chart is pretty nice. Okay, so right here was the February 2nd, um, 110 reverse split. You can see that right here. This is on Trading View, and I'm on the four hour chart. Mm -hmm. So right after that, we were at about $1.72. That's why I marked this right here. So that this is a, an accurate price. So Anything before this, not accurate. This is accurate right here, $1.72. Now, then, do you think, Taylor, I see our green bar. Do you think this chart has been adjusted? Do you see the numbers looking silly behind there? Or no, is no, this no, no, no. Th this is after the reverse split. So none, all of this from here on is accurate. Oh, right. So right over that little yellow dot is where the reverse split happened? Correct. Yeah. Oh, there's so no green bar is, there. Right. right. So everything gotcha. February, March. So... If you go up here, it wow, this went all the way up to $98, and that is accurate. That is crazy. That was that was just a couple weeks after the reverse split. That was on oh February 16th. God. Now it, it didn't close that day, and this is the four hour chart. It just you know it it, it bounced. That could have been uh, now I can see right here where I see it says seven o'clock. This was during uh pre-market hours. So ah. uh, now this is on the NASDAQ. So we could have gotten in on that. You know, yes. Whatever. Now, so if we did come back down. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we did come back down here. Um, the only thing that might have been affected is, is maybe some of these, um, some of these EMAs, but um, since the, they are lagging indicators, but since it's been over a month, I think the, these are, uh, you know, pretty accurate. So we, we came back down. I, I also identified uh, this area right here. This is kind of um, like support resistance at about 681. We had some support here, support here, and now we're coming right back up. We're poking through it. As you can see, uh, this is the four hour. I'll break it down here in a second, but we're poking through, poking through. And now we're like right on it. We're right in this area. So if we go back to the one hour, 
you can see we're trying to break out again, trying to break out again. Yep, yep, and yep. Yeah. So um, this is the 200. We're kind of flattening out. Um, this is coming down a little bit, but you know, this, this is relatively flat. So I do believe that this, this could continue here. Otherwise, you know, we, we could come down to this $4 level, but I really don't see that because we've had a lot of heat. I mean, we have had lots of spikes and this is you on the one hour chart. High. And as higher you can see, highs. right here, yeah. higher, high, higher, We're high, higher, high. 200, changing trend. She's yes. showing all the token signs we're looking for for a this breakout. Is this is exactly what I was looking for on the one hour, this, this higher, 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 higher. And, and, um, you know, the volume is still high, even though this was a little bit of a drop off, we still had a higher high right here. So, um, I do like this chart. I think, um, uh, this is definitely watch list worthy. Um, so yeah, I that's, agree. um, a, a, uh, that's holo for you. And we'll move on. <laughs> I agree. I'm liking holo. I can see why especially with the $95, $96 high. Oh my Yeah, $98, uh-huh. Oh my so, God, and that's a legitimate high. And we're down at $6 right now. So there's a lot of speculation of where that could go. And I don't want to speculate. I mean, that's, I don't know why it ran to 96 in the first place. It seems a little extreme to me. All right. <laughs> Who gave us curl? So this one was um, from Quodwo team, also the underdog. And T Rick also commented that they had news of progressive developments. So had three people comment on this one. So aha. Curl was a hot stock a while ago. There was all sorts of uh, a buzz about it online. Ticker K U L R. We do pronounce it curl. This is Curl Technology Group. Finished today at 17 cents. She was up 21.5%, another hot penny stock on the major exchange. So what is Curl all about? Curl Technology Group develops, manufactures, and licenses next generation carbon fiber thermal management technologies for batteries and electric systems, leveraging the company's roots and developing breakthrough cooling solutions for NASA's deep space missions backed by strong intellectual property portfolio. Curl enables leading aerospace, electronics, and electric vehicle manufacturers to make their products cooler, lighter, and safer for the consumer. Do you really have to cool anything off out in space? I mean, isn't it like below freezing out there? I don't understand that aspect of it. So what did I find about the company? Well, let's first take a look at their website. You get an idea of some of their products. We see a lot of pictures of uh, these things roaming around on Mars. Well, that's because they have got these different products that they are going to use on Voyager, which you're going to read in the news here. They've got a cell check here, which is uh, monitoring the batteries. You have safe case. This here um, basically keeps a lithium ion battery safe. Inside, if anything goes wrong, it stays inside the bags. They've got these thermal fibers, which do the same thing. Thermal runaway shields, internal short circuit protections, cathodes, lots of things for safety. And this is the most popular picture you see around right now. Curl batteries for uh, their Voyager program. So we've got some information over here about the company. We got two pieces of news that caught my attention. One that came out on March 12th, Curl secures new special permits from the United States Department of Transportation related to its patented Safe X product suite, including Safe Case and Safe Sleeve. What this turns out to be is when these lithium ion batteries are expelled, they're done, or they're damaged, they've got to be transported somewhere. Well, there's a lot of danger involved with that. So they have these safe cases that they put the batteries inside of. Anything happens, it's inside that bag, which can take whatever goes on. And that's supposed to make everything safe. And then on the 14th, Curl Technology Group announces a strategic contract with NanoRacks for advanced space battery development. I did open up this piece of news. They tell us that the contract underscore Curl's role in spearheading the accelerated development, testing, and early production of a specialized space battery aimed at enhancing Voyager's CubeSat applications, CubeSat applications. And then that other piece of news, 
The new special permits will cover transportation of damaged, defective, or recalled batteries, as well as end-of-life batteries to include the critical area of battery disposal and recycling, paving the way for safer and more sustainable battery recovery and rescue practices. Recently, the company announced a collaboration with Charlotte, North Carolina-based battery recycler Serba Solutions. And they've got more information there. So they're working about getting a facility where they can start recycling these batteries. It is a long ways off, but we've got some already. We've got to get this going. We've got to get places where these batteries can be brought in and we can break them down, make them safe, and recycle whatever we can. So what was the relative volume around Curl? Wow. Wow. What a jump there. Come on. Going from roughly 2 million to 44 million. So you've got yourself 20 times her normal volume right there just today. Share structure for Curl. That's not bad. Oh, that's not bad at all. Outstanding share count, about 128 million. Insiders got the lion's share, 75 million. We end up with a pretty decent float of around 33 million. Not a low float, but that's a real decent float. Market cap for the company currently is just about 18 million. Financials for Curl, what kind of money does this company make? Well, their revenues have been increasing basically over the last four years, starting off at 830,000 and getting up to almost 4 million. And they're getting to keep over 50% of that as profit. Quarterly, revenues are growing every single, well, almost every single quarter. We were down here about $50, but they've been going from 1.3 million up to over 3 million. And they're bringing home strong profits all along the way. Balance sheet. Cash, we got money in the bank, about 1.1 million, 12 million in assets, Whew. about 11 and a half million liabilities. So we are holding equity. It's not much, but we're not holding any deficit. We got $1.2 million here. Taking a look at those disclosures. Doubt we have anything over here to consider. Can't remember. 8K, quick glance in, look at that top line, regulation FD disclosure. This is a... Uh, Press release, announce a strategic contract. All right, so we already read that one. I do believe that covers everything here, right? Did we cover that news area? We did. So I want to take a look at this chart. She seems to be taking off. Um, she's real low right now. And I remember about a year ago, this was really hot. So I'm interested to see what we got here, Taylor. Oh, yep. Okay, so um, I'm just looking at the four hour from the end of last year until now. So um, I'm on high Kenoshis, but something happened this day on the 20th where we had a big gap down. I'm not going to really worry about that. There's not much we can do here. Was that um, February? So it, it was in December. So see, if you go to candles, you can see there was a gap down. This was in December. So there was some kind of news that made this completely gap down. So, but I want to switch to the high Oh, it was a... Uh... $900,000 public offering. Okay. Well, yeah, they didn't like that. Uh, anyway, since then, we've had this uh, support level at around 18 cents, give or take. Now, it it consolidated and, and really, really respected that until we broke it. Now, you can see we tried and tried to come back up. Now, we've got this nice giant green candle that just happened today. And that could be because we have earnings tomorrow. Um, oh. it has yeah, it has reacted favorable to earnings in the past. I won't go ahead and, and go all the way back there, but you can see if you want to look at this chart, especially on TradingView, you can see how the how it reacted to earnings. So this could be a reaction to this upcoming earnings. So yeah. you can see we're poking through that this this little uh, area right here. So we could absolutely come back and this could, um, instead of resistance, it, this could become a new support. So right now we're at right at around 18 cents, which is where this uh, support was, um, you know, back at the end of last year into the beginning of this year. So that's what we're seeing right now. Um, the all-time low was around 10 cents, around 18 cents. I didn't see any reverse splits. There might have been one way back when, but I didn't see any. Um, it did react favorable to earnings a few times, some very favorable. Some didn't react at all. But this could very well be a reaction to this upcoming earnings. That's uh, approximately I would anticipate tomorrow. that. I would definitely yeah. put this on my watch list. If their earnings are tomorrow and we've already had a pop like yeah. this today, 
Definitely. Right. And I would, uh, is this one on the OTC or is this a NASDAQ stock? This is, um, this I, is New York Stock Exchange. Yeah, New York Stock Exchange. Sorry, I'm, I'm looking at this. So I, I would definitely, at. if you like to catch a run, I'd watch this tomorrow morning before market. Yeah. I would anticipate a run before the bell. Now, did they tell you there if their earnings are before market or after market? Um, it says here, it, it doesn't say right here, but in the past, we've had it um, in the evenings. It'll have okay. that little, um, see this little moon, it'll say, right. a little but, moon. That, but those are, <laughs> but those are usually estimates, especially for some of these that aren't, you know, like Apple or whatever, it, 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 it'll sometimes be an estimate. This doesn't have one. But they have an estimated earnings. They have an estimated revenue. So I do expect them to report earnings tomorrow. I would that say that four-hour chart looks good. Move, move that box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so breakout. So this big spike was during pre-market hours. Just and I call that a directional, intentional spike. When you mm -hmm. get a bar to go all the way through the two hundred, put yeah. a wick out way the heck up. Come yep. down, but no lower than where it started. That tells me I'm looking for an opportunity to run. And that opportunity- I mean, we started- 200 goes flat. Mm -hmm. well, we started running and when the uh, pre-market started at 3 a.m. Uh, um, Central Time and we started running, look at this, and then at 7 a.m. we spiked at about 26 cents. So this thing does run pre-market a lot. We, yeah. we have a lot of activity pre-market. Most of the activity, as you can tell, was pre-market. And so, just, so, um, just so everybody you, knows, you can trade pre-market. You don't need special permissions. You don't have to go to your right. broker and sign anything. You can trade. Uh, the only thing you need to remember is that it's not a day trade. You have to change your time period from day trade to day plus extension or pre-market. Gotcha. After mm -hmm. hours, something. Yeah. If you don't, you're going to put your order in and go, they won't take my order. I don't know why. That's right. Why. And it'll, it'll, it'll leave it as an open order. So yeah, just, just so yeah, that's, that's a good point. So yeah, this is a really good one for the watch list, especially since we have an, an earnings tomorrow. Yeah. I agree. Okay. I like so, it. There we go. She's looking hot and ready to run. <laughs> All right, our next stock here is Celis Life Sciences, ticker SLS, coming from. Uh, that's from Bold 10. Thank you, Bold 10. SLS, I couldn't find a lot of information on it. Maybe that's why you brought it to me, hoping I could. The thing about this show is we don't do a deep dive. I don't go running around through Google or other publications and periodicals. Sometimes I check out Twitter, which I did do for this company. I couldn't find anything on Twitter. So this is ticker SLS, Celis Life Science Group. She is on the NASDAQ. She finished today at $1.55 and she was up 4% today. So what is this company about? Well, let's see if we got a description here. We don't. So I probably got it in the news. I do. Celis is a late stage clinical biopharmaceutical company focused on the development of novel therapeutics for a broad range of cancer indications. Now, as I said, I couldn't find a lot of information here. If we jump over to the news... Dun, da, da, dun. As you can see, there's nothing coming up. There's nothing there. Absolutely nothing. Going over to disclosures, we've got an 8K here. Let's hope for something. This came out on the 11th. This tells us, right, they had a couple of 8Ks here. One of them said, you are out of compliance with the minimum bid price requirement of $1. This one up here says you're back in compliance. I believe one was from... The beginning of February, and so it was about a month, about a month, and they have taken care of that. They've gotten that all taken care of. Why she started to run, I really don't know. We've got an SC13G here. This is another owner coming into the picture, High Bridge Capital Management. Bought themselves 2 million shares. They now are the proud owner of 6.5% of the company. Doesn't sound too bloody exciting. Got a bunch of Form 4s here. These are when uh, insiders acquire or dispose of shares, but we are primarily interested when they buy them or sell them, and we need a P or an S for that. These were acquired some other way, so they really don't matter to us personally. I'm sure they have relevance, but we're always looking for the purchases, and none of these were purchases. They all got shares, 
but I'm not real sure why. So from what I remember, the stock was starting to move in this region here, but I can't find any catalyst for it at all. What is the relative volume? Well, she doubled today, jumping from 1 million to over 2 million. Share structure for SLS, that's a pretty decent share count. 32 million, outstanding. No clue what the float is, but it's not higher than 32 million. And it could be considerably less. Market cap, we're at about 48 million right now. Financials for SLS. What do we got going on over here? Uh, oh, it's the lowest revenues they've had in four years. Well, if you don't count this. <laughs> 1.9 jumped to 7.6 and fell down to an even $1 million at the end of 2022. And they got to keep most of it, $900,000. Quarterly, uh-oh, something's going wrong here. We ain't got a single penny coming in this year whatsoever. What's that balance sheet look like? Well, they got money in the bank, over $4 million. They've got $8 million in assets. Oh, rats. About 12 million in liabilities. So we are holding deficit in this company of just under $4 million. Uh, anything else we can look at here? Disclosures, financials. Did I miss anything? I don't think I really did. Quarterlies. What is this? The balance sheet. No, I don't think I missed anything else. Um, and as I said, I did jump over to Twitter seeing if I could find anything over there. I absolutely found nothing. So I don't have any information here to tell you, except that the company is a biopharmaceutical company. Looks like they're research and development. And I don't know, this is the only piece of news we had. They brought in new management. They brought in a few new guys. There's been a lot of that going on right now, an executive vice president. And they tell us that their drugs are moving out of phase two, moving into phase three which is a big deal. Phase two is for efficacy. If your drug works, you get to move to phase three. So we know the drug works. Phase three now is putting their drug against all the competitors who have drugs that do the same thing their drug does. And they're looking for top dog. That's all they're interested in. You can't be as good as, you have to be better than. And that's what they're heading to now. And this can take up to five years depending how many competitors there are, it can take a long time to see which drug works better. So that's the point that they're at right now. Outside of that, I don't have anything to tell you. Taylor can probably tell you more than I can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm not sure how much I can tell you, but um, so uh, now at the beginning of January, we had a big gap down. I'm not sure January 3rd to 4th, we gapped down from about 88 cents down to 63 cents. That's quite a, a drop. Um, looks like all time low is around. Again, we have a public offering, nine million. Oh, okay. Million public yeah. offering that day. Okay. That was that day. All right. <laughs> so the low was around 50 cents. So um, as you can see, we've got, you know, higher highs, higher highs, higher highs, higher highs. Now, the thing that is kind of concerning or interesting, it's making me raise an eyebrow over here. We are having an earnings report coming up in, in about a week. Okay. Now they're estimating their revenue as 13 million. But here's what's really interesting about this. Now, I was looking back at their old um, earnings and this one. They reported exactly zero revenue. Okay, it, they they estimated at thirteen million zero reported revenue, oh, so they not right. good. But then you know it it started to go up after that, and I'm thinking, okay, what's going on? And then we gap down. So someone, I, this is all speculation. I, I, but someone might know something that's going on because they're they are going to report earnings in one week. Well, so, the one thing I failed to mention on February 9th, they received fast track from the FDA okay. on their leukemia drug and fast track was shortened down how long it's in trials. And that is a big deal. So if we started to have a run past February 9th, that could easily be the case. Okay. And that was, that was uh, here. Um, and that was maybe like a, a, a buy the rumor, sell the news. But then now we are rising, rising, rising. So, nice. And we are way beyond even these like, you know, highs over here at yeah. the end of last year. 
Um, yeah. But, they, you know, they, they didn't really react much to earnings before. But there was one earnings where we had a huge drop. I won't I won't go into all that detail, but but as well, you can see, I'd be bummed time. out if they estimated 13 million and bring zero to the table. Yes, that was I'm the very last thing. That was in November. Yeah, that and uh, unreal. And then you know it dropped a little that day, but you know it continued to come up until you said that public offering brought it down. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're above the 200 on the daily chart, which is absolutely incredible. And, you know, we've had this golden cross here, golden cross here, golden cross here. So, I mean, this chart is looking fantastic. I just don't know why, except maybe possibly someone knows something that's coming up, but you know, we, we could have another big drop who knows, but this is definitely watch list worthy to, to see what's going to happen next week. I, I'm very curious to see yeah, what between they report. The fast track and the, uh, uh, earnings, you've got one maybe pushing and one pulling, and you've got that going right now. Where yeah. she's going to go, I don't know, but she is looking strong. And yeah. if we have a catalyst, as you said, she is watch list worthy. I wow, mean, that's pretty. This is the four hour with Heikinashi. Before I was looking at just the regular candles because I wanted I wanted everyone to see that gap. I mean, look at this. Uh, this Doesn't is Heikinashi just... make it look prettier? It does make it look prettier, but I mean, you can see from the 20th of it's February on, it's following that nine EMA just perfectly. And look how lined up we are. Just, I mean, this right. is nice picture perfect. Combed. This is looking sweet, picture perfect. Yeah. It really, I mean, really is. It so, could fall. Nobody's saying it's going to climb, but we've got yeah. catalysts in the front door, catalysts in the back door, and a smooth run right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's keep an eye on this for next week because I'm very curious to see what happens after this this report. They might, they might, it might not even be something positive about their earnings or their revenue, but they might have some kind of positive news, forward guidance, anything like that. So, uh, right. yeah, let's keep an eye on this for the next couple of weeks. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. Yep. All right, next one we got up here. Uh, let's see. That's not where I wanted to start this, but we can start it there. This is Baby F. Who brought okay. us Baby F, this Taylor? This is brought to us by um, Keith Lanter. Thank you, Keith. This is a nice stock. Baby F was definitely having her run for a while there when we were having a problem with dairy. The world was having a problem with dairy. Baby F is a non-dairy uh, baby milk. And it comes in a powdered form, but they've got other products as well. Matter of fact, jumping over to their website, they have kid shakes. And the first thing that happened when I came over to this site, let me see if it happens if I refresh this. They, they told me I couldn't buy. They said, you can't buy anything here. We don't have it. So it's like, okay. They said I had to go to Amazon. So these are their products and they are selling them everywhere. They are in Walmarts. They are in Amazon. They're in all the big stores. They're in lots of little stores. There is no shortage for shelf space for this product right now. They just don't have enough of it. That's been the problem here recently. Taking a look at the news. Else Nutrition expands retail presence in the United States with major Midwest retail chain. Now I'm wondering why they didn't name it. It's like, oh, they're not going to name the company. Well, they didn't have to. It's right there in the picture. But they never say the name in the entire news press. Why couldn't they say Myers? Myers is a Michigan store. It was created just about uh, 30 minutes from me. Um, this is the home of Meyer. And it's like a Walmart, except a little more expensive. And they've got a higher brand of things in there for the most part. So they've expanded into this store as well, which is a national brand. Um, there was other news too, though, I wanted to share with you here. Let me back this up. Um, I don't know why it's not highlighted anymore. Ellis Nutrition Partners were a preeminent supermarket chain to offer toddler products. Uh, first of its kind, Whole Food. Where is it? Market Pinnacle. There it is. Ellis Nutrition signs a pioneering powder manufacturing agreement. I think I have this all lined up for us. The agreement is expected to reduce Ellis's manufacturing costs by 50% and ensure uninterrupted supply to meet growing demand. Manufacturing facility utilizes a breakthrough, low heat process to better preserve nutrient content and improve solubility and texture. I mean, this is good all the way around. They've got a facility that is gonna be able to supply them with everything that they need. They're gonna get it at 50% less 
than they were getting it before. And the quality of the product is going to be better. They tell us here the company announced signing a landmark agreement with a premier U.S.-based powder manufacturer, which is expected to reduce the company's manufacturing costs by 50%, as well as secure essential powder production capacity to meet at least to the end of 2025. They were having a problem before. They were selling out and couldn't even get any more on the shelves. That's a heck of a loss there. You're losing money when you know you could be bringing it in. Uh, let's see here. Relative volume for the company today. Ow, she dropped more than half of what she was normally doing, going from 230,000 shares down to 106. She finished the day at 23 cents, up almost 12%. And you got to love a stock on the QX, the best tier you can be on. Got every single green tick we're looking for, looks secure, penny stock exempt. This is not a startup company. You can trust this company. Share structure for baby F. Outstanding share count is about 142 million. Um, we might be able to count on this one. September of 2023, they tell us that the float is about 86 million. Could be. And the market cap currently is about 29 million. What sort of money is baby F making? It is steadily growing every single year, jumping from 427, that is 1,000, 427,000 in 2019 to 6.2 million at the end of 2022. And boy, does that cost them a lot of money. Think about that now. They're going to save 50%. That's what it's costing them right there. So cut that in half. That is all going to be on this side of the board now. So we would have had another 25 over here, which would have put us at like 3.5 million instead of under a million. This deal was a big deal for them. Quarterly, um, they're up and down here. They're doing between 1.5 million and 2.1 million. But what the heck? Sometimes they're making money. Sometimes they're not. And it's the same money. I don't get it. That's a bit strange to me. Balance sheet, what do they got? They do have money in the bank, 3.1 million. We've got assets, of course we do, 11.8 million. Liabilities are less than half that, 5.4 million. So we've got about 6.4 million in stockholder equity in this company. Not bad. Disclosures, see what we have, none. Not a single disclosure. And she's on the QX. The QX gives you every filing that you would get if you were on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. So when something happens, they put out a 6K, an 8K, a 426, you know, something. Why are there no filings here? That always confuses me. Uh, and the news, I think we already took a look at that news, didn't we? Yeah, they've got lots of news here, folks. You need to go through the news. They've got lots of different products now. They are in lots of different stores, major retail stores small retail stores, major online stores, they're everywhere. I am sure that they are going to grow and grow. So there's nothing else to tell you here. Let's take a look at that chart. Okay. Uh, just one second. Let me share that. Okay. So a uh, few things here. I noticed we had some really good support here around just, just under 50 cents and it was there for a while. We had some earnings um, that was in uh, in August. Um, they uh, did not beat their estimated revenue, but it was pretty high. They estimated 3.7 million, did not come close to that. So we had a three month really big downtrend. Now after that, and you can see we had this perfect head and shoulders pattern that did play out because we had another downtrend here. Um, but now after this, we can kind of see, it looks like we got a cup and handle situation going here. Uh, oh, possibly, I see. Possibly, right. possibly could be one. Um, now, um, this earnings, they didn't have a, they had an estimated revenue. I don't know what it was, but whatever happened during this earnings was extremely favorable because uh, you can see we went all the way up to, it's, you know, six, a, a little over 60 cents. From you what? Know, over 60 cents coming from the low of 11 cents, which was just, you know, a, less than a week before that. So that 500% run if you stay in it. Right. Uh, but, but then we did have the head and shoulders play out and we had, you know, and, and we just kind of sideways. 
now we had this run and that was in the late February. So that was very recent. Now we're kind of having this like cup and handle. We have another earnings coming up um, at the end of this month. Now they did estimate their revenue to be uh, 2.18 million, which by the way, over here, they only reported 1.8. So I mean, they may or may not make it. You said the company's growing, it might. So yeah. someone might know something. This this could be another another big run. I really like not. that chart. I mean, you got your 200 is yep. already gone level, starting to curve up. You've got mm -hmm. it bouncing off of the top of the 200. You right. have that that cup and handle actually you've got a double cup and handle there the big one you could have just covered the handle right there with your little circle or that could, could be, be a whole separate cup right it there. could it could be i i'm just i'm just you know this is just rough but right now what i see is a lot of up potential in that chart that chart to me yeah. has a lot going on for it yeah look at this one one hour higher highs higher highs higher highs this is, yeah. this is real nice on the one hour and look at look at all these emas lined up this is real nice on the one hour and like i said we have a uh, earnings coming up at the end of the month they could it, it and sometimes the earnings don't even matter they could report poor earnings but they could have some kind of really good um forward guidance uh yep. new ceo any of those things could could be super favorable and we're almost coming up to this this recent high which was around 26 cents right now we're about 23 cents so right. um this this chart's looking really really nice and and with all these earnings coming up i'd really like to Keep an eye on these, sir. These are these are good ones. I like this one. Yeah, we'll have to have an earnings show. So what well, did they we'll need to have? Yeah, we'll, we should watch that. Okay, so we'll move on to the next one. We are now taking a look at IGPK. Yeah. And that, How many of you out there want to look at this? All and of that you. came to us from Brian. Thank you, Brian. There has been a lot of people talking about IGPK. I posted a list the other day on Twitter. I go through the list of stocks on the OTC and I look for the stocks that have the most trades, not the most volume, the most trades. To me, the more trades, the more people. I'm looking for a crowd in front of that movie theater. I know it's a good movie if there's a lot of people. So I posted the highest trading stocks on the OTC and 13 out of like 25 were cannabis companies and all of them were on the QX, but one. One was on the Pink Limited, IGPK. What's her name? Integrated Cannabis Solutions. So I highlighted it green and said, all these greens are cannabis. Well, I got my butt tore up for that. <laughs> Everybody says, you don't know what you're talking about. IGPK isn't a cannabis company. It's like, it isn't. Why, why isn't it? I had to do some due diligence. And I'm glad they pointed it out because there are some huge freaking news here, folks. At first I thought, well, okay. And while me and Taylor were talking about it, I found some information that just blew my mind. IGPK, Integrated Cannabis Solutions, finished today at a little over a penny and a half. She was up over 10 and a half percent today. She is pink limited. That means she's late on one or more of her financials. If she doesn't get those financials caught up in time, she will be removed from the OTC market and tossed down to the expert market. The expert market is not a delisting. It's a penalty box. It's a timeout. They go down there and they stay there until they get their financials caught up. Once they're caught up, they come back on the market like nothing happened. And if you're invested in the company, when they get yanked off the market down to the, the expert, you go with them. You can sell your shares, but you can't buy them, but you're not going to want to sell them because every time stocks go down in the expert market, the price falls bad. I mean, three, four, five zeros in front of your number. And then when it comes back on the market, if it was at two cents, it'll come back on at triple zero one and then fly straight to two cents again. And you can make a huge gain on those returning from the expert market. So we'll take a look. Well, let's do it right now. We are here at the filings. What are we late on? These are the periods they filed for. We've got September, June. Uh-oh. Uh, okay, there's February. Uh, there's December's. We got an attorney letter. Everything looks good here. Uh, really, is the only one we're missing three? It looks like the only one we're missing here. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I was going to say the last one. December of 2023. But when I go back further here, there's the third, the first one for 2023, the last one for 2022. Where's the rest? 
We jump from 2022 to 2021. Where is September's, July's, and March's for 22? Where is September and July's and December's for 2021? Now I'm worried. Now we're talking about six, seven uh, financial reports that are over a year freaking old and they do not forgive folks. <laughs> Just because they're 10 years late doesn't mean you don't have to file them. They want those filings. So I see a lot of holes here, a lot of gaps. So I don't know how many that they've got to get done. They only have so much time to do this and they don't tell us how much time that is. But you'll know when they're coming to the end of their rope. It will say grace period right up underneath this transfer agent verified in yellow. It'll say grace period. That's a countdown. They got 15 days to get it done or they're down to the expert market. Now, they won't tell you the date here, but if you come over here to quote right there, click that button, scroll down to proprietary quote eligibility. PQE status is yes. That means it's piggybacking off of others. One broker on the OTC said, yes, this is worthy of selling. This is what it's worth. Every other broker on the OTC market said, I'll go with that. And they all piggyback off of that. At some point in time, when it gets into danger zone, that's going to say no. It's going to say no. And then down here, it's going to say the last grace period date. And right there will be the last day it will be on the OTC market. And it will disappear, guaranteed. So, what can I tell you about this company? Well, this is all I could find. This is at the very bottom of their most recent financial. You see how many pages are here? Where did I find this? I found this and I do this on purpose. I scroll all the way down to the bottom and it's called subsequent events. There you go. This is the only place this information is. I haven't found it anywhere else. Please, if you found it somewhere else, drop it in the comments and don't be rude about it. Got a lot of rude people right now who won't tell me <laughs> where the information is. They just say, you don't know what you're talking about. I had to go digging and I found it. On November 30th, 2023, the company completed a reverse merger with JFH Digital E-Commerce Corporation. As a result of the reverse merger, a rescission agreement was entered into with Consolidated Global and Tahoe. The subsidiary Houdini Group was dissolved. They had news come out September of last year. They were still in cannabis. They were making a deal with Houdini to deliver the cannabis. <clears throat> That's all done. All done. You're right. They're not a cannabis company anymore. As a result of the merger, there were no shares of preferred outstanding. Now, this is what's exciting. I see this. It's like JFH Digital E-Commerce. All right, so we got a merger. Big deal. It's going to be speculative. It's going to be hype. Well, I wanted to know something about this company. So I went digging around trying to find some information. And I found this. They talked to us about this merger. And there's a lot of information here. And I'm not going to go through it all. But I do want to bring out some big bullets to blow your mind. Okay? Down here, they tell us. <laughs> JFH's primary business operation is running an e-commerce platform through an app which is available for download. The app lets customers browse and purchase a wide range of products and services across various sectors. JFH stands as one of the leading digital e-commerce companies in China, boasting a gross merchandise value exceeding $10 billion. But wait, folks, we're not done yet. There's something else here. I want to make, make sure I didn't lose my highlight. In addition to their e-commerce platform, JFH also has released a phone that offers remarkable user experience on par with your big name brands like Samsung and Hawaii. And they go and talk about this new phone. With over 100,000 operational facilities and extensive user base, JFH is well positioned to dominate the e-commerce market in China and beyond. JFH, already a major player in China, plans to extend its reach to other booming e-commerce markets such as US, Europe, and Southeast Asia. The company is also planning to enter new sectors, including healthcare, education, and entertainment. Now, wait a minute. There is one thing I have not seen here, and where did I lose it? There it is. JFH Digital E-Commerce Corp a behemoth in the Chinese e-commerce landscape valued at an astonishing 
$70 billion. Folks, my mind is blowing here. I was excited about TGGI two, three years ago when they had a $6 billion wine company that was going to get with this sub penny company down in the triple zeros. The merger happened and we never saw that $6 billion. But this, come on now, even if it isn't all that they say it is, and you can do some more due diligence, $70 billion is one hell of a hype. $70 billion valuation for a company that is coming into another company that's worth a penny. Folks, that is astronomically big news. That is one of the biggest catalysts I have ever seen. Now, I found this over here at, uh, oh my God, D Gen Mag, D E G E N M A G, D Gen Mag.com. If you want to read this, they've got a lot of great information in here. So, what was the relative volume around this company? How many people do you think saw that piece of information? I don't think enough. Our volume has virtually not changed, going from 38.9 million to 38.3 million today. I don't think anybody knows it's worth $70 billion. Come on. Share structure for the company. Oh, God. All right. We got a lot of shares here. 4 billion shares outstanding, 2 billion shares in the float. But if it makes you feel any better, the insider's got about $2 billion as well. So it's not bad. Market cap, we're at $60 million for the company. Is this company making any money? Uh, okay, at the end of 2022 they were, but that's when they were doing cannabis. So this isn't going to matter anymore. Quarterly, yeah, they were making money, even making profits. Then they made no money. And still lost money. <laughs> Bad last quarter. And right now we're not seeing anything. And I mean, look at that. We're not seeing anything. There's nothing in the bank. We have no short-term investments. We have no assets. We have no liabilities. What the heck is this? Nothing. No. <laughs> I don't know, folks. This is all from September. <coughs> and this is now March. So, Obviously, we are in a change. This is a shell company. It doesn't say shell, but here's my here's my biggest fear, folks. You got a $70 billion corporation. Let's call it $10 billion. They did mention $10 billion at the bottom, which is still way too much for a penny stock. Literally a penny. This is very exciting, except for the fact they're pink limited, and it looks like they are at least eight filings behind from years ago. And filings are not free to do. They do cost something. They take time. They've got to be approved. They've got to go through the process. I don't know if they're going to have enough time to get everything done before grace period shows up. That would be the worst thing that could happen. Do a merger with a big company like this and then end up on the expert market. So I don't see anything else here to really tell you. Uh, that is all we have got. And we are standing by. Now we're just waiting for the information to get out that I found. We need a news press. We need something to say we're in this merger. The company's worth this much, 10 billion, 70 billion, whatever it is. Because when everybody sees that, this stock is going to run. It's going to run just because of that number and nothing else. All right, let's take a look at that chart then for IGPK. Okay, I had to make sure that we're talking about the same ticker because this is this is wild. Wait till you see this. <laughs> okay, so we have looked at this before. We looked at it on the 21st of December and we were right here. Like that's only the that's the only reason the arrow's there, just just for reference. So for literally four months, we were in between triple zero six and double zero twelve, you know, give or take. I mean, just just yep. chilling and doing nothing. Until around the 11th of January, we started to run up to 005, which is like quite a bit. Well, wait till you see what's been going on now. Wow, oh, Mount God. Everest. Goodness look at this. gracious. We are on the four-hour chart, uh, Haikonashis. We reached a high of 0 0.0175. So... A penny and three quarters. 
from triple zero six just a few months ago. Like it, it, maybe the twenty first, it was it was double zero twelve. So that would be from six to one hundred and twelve, something like that. You take away all the zeros. Oh my God! You're looking at like, oh, I don't know, twenty thousand percent gains. <laughs> this is insane. Yeah, this is almost like the the one toner we were looking at. It was just sitting there in that little tiny range, and now we're nearly two cents, and it was at triple zero six. No one was even looking at it. In wow. fact. I mean, it was getting even below that. It was at triple zero four. And this is the date we looked at it. So whoever brought this the first time, that was a hot stock because, you know, less than a month, the three weeks later, it started to run. And it, it, and it like ran. Rocket stock, and rocket stocks worry me that they're going to crash. But this is one hell of a catalyst. Yeah, I mean, it, well, it ran, it ran to double zero five from double zero one two and that was like wow that that's pretty amazing but no 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 it kept going and going and now we're over a penny we're a penny and three quarters point yeah, zero yeah, one still, seven five and that's a great buy price that is that's a great crazy. buy price you, you know and you report to go to a nickel you gotta wait for 15 cents to get 300 oh, gain. Let me just blow your mind even more. When you were talking, I looked back at the chart. I won't. I won't bore you to go all the way back, but it has not seen this price since April of 2019. So we're talking pre-COVID. It was this this price. Even COVID levels, it did not get this high at, 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 at over a penny. 0. 0.0175. So what's that shorter chart wild. look like? The long chart looks sure. sweet. So this is the five minute. I could, well, let me look at 15 first. I like the 15 better. Yeah. So stair as you stepping. can see, we are stair stepping up. We are stair stepping up. Yeah. The steps were small, medium, and now they're getting big. Look at that. That is just, I mean. Oh man. And those are started. Beautiful. Look at this. We, I mean, we did consolidate some. We did up, up, up. I mean, we are stair stepping up. Wow. I, it could definitely keep going. I mean, yeah, we we're, we're, we pull back a little bit, but that is totally healthy to do. Like most yeah. charts will do that. Like this is this is this is fantastic. I would expect minute. her to come down any further than that fifty day SMA. She looks very strong. She's going to bounce off of SMAs. That's what they're there for. But fall, yeah. I don't think this is going to fall for a while. I, I think don't think so either. She comes out. She's going to push. This could be. This could be one hell of a play. And and it already has been. And, you know, yeah, people I think, yeah, like, oh, it's too late to get in. It's too late to get in. Maybe it is. But so. you know what? Maybe it's not. This is like, this is, I mean, from, from triple zero six to 0. 0.0175 is mind blowing. <laughs> to you me don't anyway. get that on. You don't find that with blue chip stocks. No, 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 you don't. <laughs> and this is wild. So yeah, this is uh this is a good one, obviously. Yeah. I mean, I was looking to see and, I, and they're oh. they're not reporting anything. Like, look at these, they're not reporting anything. So I don't understand. It's not like this is running on earnings or anything. We, no, we it's that speculation of a seventy billion dollar company stuff. Yeah, yeah. In. Right, right. So, I mean, the fifteen-minute chart. I don't. I mean, you. I don't know what else you want from this. This is uh, outstanding. So yeah, yeah. We, got it. we got everything we need. This is watch list worthy. Oh and yeah. We, and I would honestly, I I'm gonna want to play this one. This is too big to pass up. Ten billion, seventy billion. Just mm -hmm. that number being tossed around is gonna get people on fire. And they're going to think they're missing out if they're not a part of it. And they're going to buy just because they don't want to miss out. Forget about knowing what the hell is going on. Mm -hmm. FOMO is going to make this puppy yeah, run. Yeah, FOMO is going to, yeah. And, and it's already, yeah. I mean, that, I, I'm mind blown at how, how fast that grew. Unbelievable. After sitting dormant for months and months, four months, four months, it did almost nothing. And then now it just blew up to thousands of percent gain. It's just wild. Okay, so we'll just move on. Yeah, that was a nice stock. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, our next one. This is Omega Therapeutics. 
ticker OMGA, brought to us by... Uh, this is brought to us by Explore at Will. Thank you, Explore at Will. Omega Therapeutics. Couldn't find a lot of information on this one either. She finished today at $3.53, and she dropped almost 10% on Thursday. She is on the NASDAQ, so we're not going to have to pay for any of our transactions. You can trade at pre-market. Come on, folks. You can trade at aftermarket too, but normally it's the pre-market where we see all the activity. And of course, you're not going to have to worry about being taken because this company's got lots of rules they got to follow. So what is this company about? Well, let's see if we can get some information here just by jumping into a news press. Come on, jump into my news press for me. All right. We got Omega Platform and Omega Therapeutics. Omega Therapeutics is a clinical stage biotechnology company pioneering the development of a new class of programmable epigenomic mRNA medicines to treat or cure a broad range of diseases. Now, this is pretty deep. I can't even explain it to you because I don't understand it much. Um, but they've got things that they are working with for difficult to treat targets. They're working with a lot of different aspects of the disease, genes, human genes and stuff. You can get more information about it by doing some uh, research. Um, what did I find about this company? There wasn't a lot of information. As I said, they're going to a uh, presentation, which is really good. You want these people sharing information about what they do, not just with investors so that we buy their stock, but with companies or other huge investors who are going to pour money into the company or use their services or products. Now, the only piece of news I see here, and I couldn't get any other information about it, Omega Therapeutics, the next weight loss drug runner. Now, I dive in to read this, but it comes from Seeking Alpha, and I'm blocked from Seeking Alpha. Two years ago, they blocked because I went to their site too many times for free. And Wall Street has done that to me. Bloomberg has done that to me. I can't get to any of those sites unless I want to pay. And I'm not paying for every single site. So I know they've got something to do with weight loss here. And I couldn't see any other information, but that is hot. Anything yet is helping people lose weight is always a big deal. I just don't have any clues about it. What is the relative volume around the company today? They dropped and they're not doing too much on the NASDAQ. We only had 547,000 shares average daily for the last 30 days. Uh, today, we dropped down to 414,000. What is the share structure for the company? Well, that's not too bad. We got 55 million outstanding. No clue what the float is, but it won't be more than that. It could be less. Market cap, 215 million. That's not looking bad. Financials for the company. Well, that's a big jump. We've got 144,000 in 2021, and then they bounced all the way up to over 2 million. And look at this. It's not costing them one penny for any of the money they make. I'm not quite sure how they're doing that unless it's that platform that they got. Quarterly, they're making money and it's growing up and down, up and down. But this last quarter, September, they hit $831,000. And again, it doesn't cost them one penny to make any of the money that they make. Balance sheet, lots of money in the bank, over $81 million. Total assets, $217 million. Liabilities is way down there at $141 million. So we got $76 million in stockholder equity. That's our money divided up amongst those shares. Disclosures for the company. Oh, yeah, that's right. Disclosures. What do we got here? Got an SC13G. This is an active investor. Who is this? This is, see if we can get a name here. Uh, can't even find a person's name. There it is. Abigail P. Johnson. She has got herself just about 10% of the company. Never heard of her before, but it's always good to see somebody coming into the company. And a form four, I have no idea what it is. This is probably options. This actually shows you when they buy options too. So you can see if they believe the price is going to go up or down. If they buy calls or if they buy puts, you can see that information. Uh, it seems to me there was something else I wanted to share here about this company, and it's not coming to mind. Let's see if anything jumps up here. Dumped it. Oh, what, what is that? Right, right. We saw that. Um, 
stock options, Doug Runner. No, I don't think there was anything else. I think I wanted to tell you more. So there is a lack of information here. Now, real quick, it doesn't take much time. I'm going to pull up Twitter here, and we're going to put in the ticker Omega, O-M-G-A, see if we can get the company site to come up. Uh, maybe put in a dollar sign in front of that so they know we're talking about this. Omega, some people asking, let's see here. Yes, they took gains. Nope, I don't see anything connected with them. So it doesn't look like they have their own site here, epigenetic. So what you really got is that last piece of news. That is the real catalyst, I guess. Omega Therapeutics announces two poster presentations at the American Association of Cancer Research. Did they tell us what the first poster will feature preclinical data validating a novel method for evaluating epigenomic controller targeting engagement using. Why do I got to read this stuff? <laughs> this is for models of non-small cell lung cancer. Anytime you work with cancer, if you make headway in cancer, your, your drugs are going to do well. So there's probably more information here, folks, but it's going to have to be dove into on your own time. Did so we have any news from, uh, sorry, uh, from like uh, January 3rd, 4th, 5th? Uh, January 11th, January 5th. Uh, no, every January single, 4th? it's all Seeking Alpha. This really isn't anything about them. The only hmm. piece of news we had was on the 2nd of January. That was okay. about a conference at a healthcare. And then okay. we had a conference on the 6th of March. That's the only news okay. we got. Okay. So let's take a look at that chart. Okay. So uh, this is why I was asking. We had a huge spike in volume around the 4th, and we went from uh, around 268 all the way up to 646. Um, I, I noticed, uh, I zoomed that we're on the four-hour high Kanashi candles, and I was looking at we have kind of a trend line here, and we have broken that. So I, I don't love that. That doesn't mean we can't pop back up. Now, one thing, if you're on TradingView you see, and you see this earnings thing, um, now they always put this like as an estimated. I looked it up elsewhere, and um, they're actually not doing their earnings until March 26th pre-market. So, um, you know, make a note of that. It's not, it wasn't today. So maybe people were upset that they didn't announce anything, but ah, they have, they have yeah, so they've postponed it. It's now March 26th pre-market. So that's, um, yeah. So, so this is the four hour chart. We've actually broken all the way through and closed below the um, 200 EMA, which was uh, about $3 and 70 cents. We're now at 360 and we did break this trend line. Uh, pretty badly. Um, it was looking uh, good until that break right there. That's yeah, scary. I, I don't love that. It was, it was looking nice. And, you know, we had this, this nice, you know, resistance, not that resistance is nice, but it was really respecting that. And it was yep. respecting this trend line too. Lows um, were getting higher and higher. It was looking grand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't love this, but like I said, that might've been related to this. I don't know for right. sure. Um, but yeah, so March 26 is now their earnings. Um, I didn't may really be, it may be an opportunity, as you said, just disappointment, overreaction. The price could dropped have been. real hard. It could easily pop right back on top. Oh, of definitely. That. Yeah, just, it, it could. It could. So if we look like, but see, look at the one hour here. We're consistently, you know, below that. Yeah. Um, where does it look below. like it would fall to? Hmm. Right there is that. Uh, where where do you think it would drop to if it kept falling? Where right do you think about you right about here would be That's one. What I was thinking. Yeah, this would be one, and below that maybe three twenty four. Um, but uh, you know, I was hoping it would keep respecting that. It tried. It tried. It I think um, if we.